Hi everybody. What I wanted to do was just to wrap up um, the completion of my O Group project. I'm pleased, really pleased that I've got to the finish line. Um, I've now completed, certainly for now, the key armour elements that I wanted to uh, get done. So I just wanted to show you some of those today um how i've gone about doing those basing them painting them decals etc etc and then just show you the finished project overall uh, as it looks at the moment there are a couple of uh ancillary sort of units and bits and pieces of extras that i may add on in in due course uh, but this is probably the final video i will show as far as my project progression has um, achieved so far so uh, without further ado um, I'm going to focus in no particular order uh, first of all uh, my Stuarts so um, I used uh, the Army Painter British Armour Green uh, spray as my undercoat and uh, then I did a wash um, coupled with deck tan dry brush. Uh, that was pretty much it as far as the key colours of the uh, tank were concerned. And then um, I put on some of the Vallejo pigments uh, again just to replicate mud and dirt around the tracks which you can kind of see there. Um, then I used some of the decals from Pendraken, um, the 610mm uh, decals. So you've got the uh, British sort of allied uh, sign there used pre-D-Day because these are meant to represent Italian campaign units. Um, and I've also used, uh, you can probably just see the yellow triangle there, uh, again, um, unit markings on the on the turrets there in terms of the basing uh, the usual basing approach with the Bacchus 6 mil basing system um, followed by static grass uh, sprinkled on and some clump foliage uh, really as simple as that as far as finishing the base and then I've just edged the base uh, with black um, certainly for these units uh, because in the game um they won't be particular numbers or have particular unit designations as, as far as i can see so that's the stuarts uh which i've done two they come in a group of two uh, if i want to pay the points i've done an m10 um uh as far as the british m10 um again this the 76 millimeter as opposed to the 17 pounder um, again, exactly the same painting approach. Um, the mud on the tracks, the uh, decals and the basing exactly the same. So really pleased with how that's come out. Then we've got Churchill's. Um, I believe from memory these were the Churchill Fives with the six pounder uh, guns so again. Uh, we're not quite got to the uh, to the realms of the more advanced uh, guns on these tanks at this point. And again, um, this one you can see has got the red square on the turret, uh, different unit designations. But in terms of painting and the approach, um, it, it, exactly the same uh, from, from that point of view. So um, hopefully that's given you a good flavour of those. So again, we've got two of those uh in the in the in the uh, picture there uh part of the reconnaissance platoon um or oh, this is the armored car element so these are humbers uh different marks so again you can see uh same same painting method uh quite simple but um i think it comes out quite well quite effective um again different humber different mark um and again, with the unit designation there, decals, but ultimately 
the, uh, the the same approach. Over the back, we've got the uh, the scout sort of reconnaissance platoon. So we've got a Daimler armored car. Um, very similar approach again. Just so you can kind of get a feel for those. Uh, so that's the armored car, and then you've got the the scout car. Um, exactly the same there. Okay, so finally at the back we've got the Shermans. So I've done two. Uh, these are basic uh, M4A2s, I think, with the 75mm. Um, again, these were kind of the main ones being used at this point. The 76s hadn't really come into fruition. Um, I didn't want to kind of tip over into that. Um, but painting, basing, muddying of tracks exactly as you say i've got two of those and i've got two exactly the same mark um with stowage um etc on the outside so um again this is the pendraken models they come with all of this already included um obviously there's not very many places to put the marking or decals on because they're covered up so i've just put um as i've seen in some photographs of the period that they had um, country of origin markings on the front there um, but uh, ultimately two of those as well so that as far as O group is concerned is sufficient uh, armour options for the period I'm doing uh, for the average game I say I may add a few little bits and pieces here and there um, but I'll pop back in a moment with everything set up uh, just to show you how it looks and uh, just how I've done unit designations for the infantry. So uh, this is the final overview of everything uh, painted up and displayed. So we've got the three companies of the battalion uh, with their individual um, company commanders. Uh, each company is three platoons uh, of three sections. So um, you can see there how, how the infantry is set up. And then we've got all the subsidiaries uh, lined up in the background there, uh, which I've shown you over recent videos. Uh, just to finally kind of pull this together, uh, I needed to make a decision around the infantry on how to you do unit designations. So, for example... Uh, this is three company, um, three company is green company and just on the back of the base there, hopefully you can see that uh, company commander has a little green marker there and then for each um, platoon within the company, so this is number three platoon has a white designation um, so we've got green with white for um, the, the second uh, platoon we've got brown and uh, for the first we've got yellow and, and basically I've just done that uh, for my own recognitions um, so you can see blue brown there um, blue yellow and this one should be blue white um, and then for the other battalion we've used red just so you can see that there so um, that just will make it easier for me uh, when my units are on the table facing the opponent I'll be able to see very, very quickly what units belong to which platoons or which companies um, very, very easily. I haven't bothered to do that for any of the subsidiary units because ultimately I'm not going to be using them every game and I'll be designing a list depending on the game and the scenario I'm fighting. For the um, HQ, Battalion HQ units, we've given them a yellow designation. Um, so... That really was in line with um, armour units, which HQ units generally had a yellow marking. So 
Um, that's what I've done there. For the Engineer Assault Platoon, they... Um, oops. Let's get that one. They are just painted black. So um, they're just a black uh, recognition symbol for, for them. And for the Reconnaissance Platoon, uh, we've just given them a grey um, whoops, a grey designation there. Um, so again, it's very easy to kind of spot the differences between the various units. But um, that's my 10 mil O group project complete. Uh, the British are now ready to get on the table. I say a few little extra bits here and there to do. Uh, but I hope, hope you've enjoyed these videos. I've given you a little insight into my journey in uh, painting what has been um, my second 10 stroke 12 mil um, army. Uh, I will be showcasing another one soon, uh, my Teuton army, uh, which I had some while now, which was one of my first ones I did a long time ago. Uh, but this certainly is my first foray into 10 mil World War II. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you again soon.